having darks in your watercolors are so important because without that, we don't have light in our scene. So today I'm gonna to talk about how we can create strong darks in our paintings. We cannot have bright light in our paintings if we don't have strong darks. There's no way to create light without darks. So in watercolor, we're essentially painting backwards. We are preserving the white of the paper or really light areas of our scene and painting around them as we work through our painting process. The brightest that something can be is the white of the paper. We are working from the white of the paper to gradually get darker and darker throughout the painting process. So it's very important to use darks to create light in our scenes. So the first thing that we wanna remember when we are mixing darks is to use less water. So here's a simple demonstration of this. I'll take some raw umber here, and there's a little bit of water on my brush and paint. So that's a very thin tea-like mixture. Then let's use a little more paint and less water. There's about a milk-like mixture. And here is a little darker, about a cream consistency. Joseph Smukvich talks about Vegemite. There's a Vegemite consistency that gets you your darkest bit of a pigment. And that is where you're using almost all paint and no water. Uh, this one's a little weak, but you can tell that the more water we use, the less strong that your pigment is gonna be. The more pigment you use versus water is when you really start to get some strength. So that's key number one to mixing darks is use less water. Now there are a variety of ways that we can mix darks. Some people, some artists like to mix really warm colors and really cool colors. So let, let me show you a demonstration of that. I'm gonna take some raw sienna, burnt sienna, and maybe a little bit of rose matter permanent. So these are really strong mixtures of my warm colors. So let's go ahead and apply that on the paper. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse my brush off, and now I'm gonna get some really strong blue values or cooler values and that is maybe some ultramarine blue maybe a little Payne's gray to darken that up so a really strong cool value and I'm gonna mix those two on the paper and let them blend so that's one way to mix a very nice natural looking dark and there are areas where the cool and the warm kind of mix together on the paper, and that can be a very attractive way of creating darks within your painting. Using less water and using warm and cool on your paper. That's a nice way to create some attractive darks in your scene. So when I was mixing the darker cool values, you saw that I used some Payne's Gray. So that's another way that we can create uh, some strong darks. So I'm gonna take some raw umber, and some neutral tint. I'm mixing them together on the palette. Again, less water, more paint. So that's another way of taking a color, adding some strength to it and darkening it up using neutral tint. So you can do the same thing with Payne's Gray. These paints are Daniel Smith paints. So your neutral tint and your paints gray might look slightly different depending on the brand that you use, but typically neutral tint is more of a warmer dark color and paints gray is more of a cooler dark color. Consider that when you're choosing which one that you wanna use. So feel free to experiment when you're painting. Use some of your strongest colors to create different darks see which darks that you like best. You know, some students talk about creating mud when they paint. If that's something that you are struggling with or you don't like how your darks look, I would suggest minimizing your colors. Find two strong colors that you like and maybe add some neutral tint or something else and simplify your recipe. If you're grabbing 
all that's on your palette and just adding more and more as you paint, then you might not like the darks that you create. See what's the fewest amount of colors that you can use and create a really strong dark that you like. I like using lavender, you know, neutral tint, some cobalt blue, just experiment. Maybe some rose matter permanent. And there's a deep, cooler color blue that you can use as well. So feel free to experiment, come up with different combinations that you like. And one last thing I'll mention, as our paintings dry, the values tend to fade a little bit. You might think that your mixture is strong enough, but if there's a lot of water mixed in with it, it's going to dry more, which will equal more fading. So this is something that you'll need to compensate for when you paint. You might want to paint your darks just a little bit stronger than you think you need to, so once the drying occurs, your values will be where you want them to be. Watercolor is not a very forgiving medium. It's hard to correct. Having a plan as we go into our painting is crucial. So that's why I made this free video lesson, Seven Secrets to Fresh, Powerful Paintings. Many students have already watched this video lesson and are seeing great results, and I know that it can help you out as well. All you have to do is follow the link down below in the description and learn how to paint more fresh, and powerful watercolor paintings. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. What are some things that you would like me to create a video about? So if you have something that you're struggling with, something about watercolor that you've always been curious about, please leave that in a comment below. I would love to hear from you. I hope that this information has been helpful for you and you're continuing to grow and learn as an artist. Keep working at it and I will see you next time.